Hello, this is one black British woman's voice. I know how it has been an age and forgive the sunglasses, they're broken. Anyway, today I'm here to reveal to you the secret process that social media sites such as Twitter use to determine which profiles to suspend and which tweets are violations. And why that same said process is inextricably linked to why so many feral racists are unable to roam unpunished on Twitter, myopically targeting black users like laboratory created viruses actually more like rats, the rats they are. Then I'll cleave this process to reveal to you why that process is related to the reason why so many profile suspensions and tweets judged to violate guidelines appear to be disproportionately and aggressively performed against black Twitter users. But first of all, some background info to provide you context for this subject and the impetus for this vlog. Research conducted by the human rights organization Amnesty International Amnesty International regarding online abuse aggregated that it was black people who received a disproportionate volume of said online abuse. Furthermore, when you further aggregated this quantitative data regarding online abuse, it was ascertained that it was primarily black women who shouldered the lion's share of it. And additionally, the research exposed the fact that it was predominantly social media sites such as the dreadlocked Jack Dorsey or the black-faced Jack Dorsey from Twitter and the incel Mark Zuckerberg's dying Facebook who primarily enabled and empowered the bridge trolls doing the abusing. Now what has racist online abuse got to do with the procedure that Twitter and Facebook use to determine which profiles to penalise or indeed which tweets they deem violated their community standards violation guidelines? I hear you ask. Well, the first clue is in the words community standards, because it's not a professional Twitter employee who determine whether a tweet has violated a standard or what profiles to suspend, but rather a body of average non-paid Twitter users, i.e. the Twitter user, company, uh, Twitter user community itself that does the judging and deciding. Now, how do I know this? Because once upon a time, I was a non-paid community standards moderator for one of the top three apps of the globe. And this app's process of determining who or what had violated the community standards of that site is inextricably parallel to how Twitter decides which tweets should be deleted and which profiles will get suspended or put on timeout. So harking back to the earliest part of my vlog, the violation guidelines that you see on Twitter are called community guidelines. Okay, community guidelines guidelines because it's not a body of professional experts who decide on whether the post or profile has violated the standard but simply a large group of everyday Twitter users who aren't employed Twitter staff but whom Twitter have deemed safe enough to invite them in to be honorary non-paid community moderators. Of course, this is necessary because Twitter doesn't have the capacity or time to, to labour over whether every individual tweet reported has violated a guideline. So they use a free labour force in the form of the community of Twitter users to do that for them. Which basically means you could be a Twitter user, uh, moderator, you could be a Twitter moderator, anyone could be a Twitter moderator, as long as you're a long-term user who doesn't have a history of being antagonistic or antagonistic to, towards other users, and you're happy to work for free. Anyway, now, when a post is flagged up, or rather when crybaby snowflakes mass report a post that's hurt their feelings or hit them with raw facts that they can't bend with fake news, the post or profile is then passed through a small pool of a group containing about 20 or so of these non-paid community moderators. And it's shown to them one moderator at a time, with each moderator either giving it a pass or writing next to it the word violates. It's here that I'll just add that even though it's passed through uh, one non-paid moderator at a time, the next moderator still gets to see what the previous moderator has already written, which may well influence the end decision, but I could care less and I have no idea why they, they, they filter it that way. But anyway, so... Now, if by the 20th community moderator, the said offending profile or tweet receives more violation strikes than passes, the post is then jettisoned to an officially paid Twitter employee who then actions it. Do you hear that word? Actions. You see, all the paid Twitter employee does is action it. Because again, Twitter doesn't have the funds to employ the number of people it would take to determine if a post has violated 
a community standard. But Twitter does have enough money to employ and pay staff to simply action a decision that the non-paid community moderators have settled on. The actions themselves can range from either sending a warning to the offending profile who posted the violating tweet, uh, putting the profile on time out, getting them to delete the tweet, whatever, or suspending the tweet altogether. Now to climax this vlog, here's the expose as to why it's disproportionately black Twitter users and even black Facebook users who endure suspensions and deletes much, much more than any other race. And why this also correlates with why so many black and in particular black female pro profiles are exposed to racist abuse unredressed but perversely face punitive repercussions if they, are, they as a black u user respond to these racists. It's because 99% of these non-paid community moderators are white. I base this on the fact that when I was a moderator on another app, I was consistently the only black person out of 20 to 50 non-paid community moderators at a time. You with me so far? Essentially, meaning I was the only black to be on that privileged circuit of non-paid moderators. This means that out of thousands of moderators, only a minuscule amount of them would be black. And there you have it. The community standards panel who are determining if your tweets or profile is offensive is overwhelmingly white people doing the judging. Yes, Indians are involved in this process too, but not as substantially, and their involvement in by proxy supremacy will be discussed in another one of my vlogs another time. But to reiterate, the non-paid community moderators are overwhelmingly white people. Furthermore, they're whites who have no qualification to make judgments. And of course, can go about applying their cognitive bias, confirmation bias, and unchecked racism with impunity. So is the Twitter process clearer to you now? Does it clarify the overt racial bias and where it comes from and why your profile gets suspended over racists like David Duke and other sewers like that? Anyway, please share this vlog on your social media pages, such because revelations like this Polex, Twitter and Facebook. And nothing would satisfy me more than watching these supremacist sites have no power over this particular vlog at all. However, if by some kind of strange devil worship they end up having some kind of power over it, if this post is taken down by YouTube, go find my backup channel on the owned, the black owned uh, and run website, Black Junction TV. Any videos YouTube take down here, I then put on Black Junction TV and of course they can never be taken down. Also, follow me on Twitter at one underscore woman um, and click on that backup page on there as well. So if that page gets suspended, I can find you again. I'm much more active on Twitter because it's just so easy just to throw up the stuff that I have to say on there. So find me on there. Anyway, this is One Black British Woman's Voice. I know it's been too long. I've missed you. I hope you're all safe. I hope I haven't lost a single watcher through COVID. And I'm out. <laughs>